With Hurricane Isaac all over, OWS protesters have been all over Tampa's Republican National Convention. But since it ain't over till the fat lady sings, protest actions continued on Wall Street South just before the start of Democratic National Convention in Charlotte, North Carolina. Elsewhere, Fort Meade, Maryland got a visit from Bradley Manning supporters. OWS Week has also been to D.C. for a look at the anti-Romney march there. We are the people and we're united. Yeah, we're saying it. Occupy Wall Street does not have much use for the two major political parties in the U.S. or for an electoral system tainted by corporate and militarist arms of the 1%, voter suppression and non-verifiable electronic tally machines. The coalition of labor, peace, environmental, social and economic justice activists who ally with Occupy know for a fact the Republican Party will not address harsh realities of the global 99% and the planet they inhabit. The same activists think the chances of the Democrats taking a real stand are slim to none, but hope springs eternal in the hearts of Americans raised to believe in the founding documents of their country. Protesters have congregated at red and blue conventions during the past seven days. The cities of Tampa, Florida and Charlotte, North Carolina have been preparing for the conventions for nearly two years. Tens of millions of dollars were spent on heavily fortified convention centers, militarized police and security beef-ups, joint exercises with various federal agencies and the U.S. military, and constant law enforcement suppression of citizen activists. Some say monies might have been better spent on improving the lots of each town's citizens, but hey, the U.S. government rarely passes on a chance to stage shock and awe productions. That these productions were geared to terrorize and intimidate American citizens from engaging in protected First Amendment rights is meaningful news. It is too bad that mainstream corporate media yammered on about hollow talking points instead. Where you're from, why you're out at the voter suppression rally? My name is Karen Apple. I'm from Gainesville, Florida. I'm the council organizer for MoveOn.org in Gainesville. And I'm here today because voter suppression is one of the major issues in this election because basically voter suppression steals elections. The Republicans are not doing really well in the polls, so they figure that they have to steal the election to get elected. Republicans held events closed to the public, and parade routes were carefully plotted away from the matting crowd. Puppets, bandanas, masks, and signs with sticks were outlawed, but Tampa did not ban firearms. Not that occupiers were the ones carrying. Hurricane Isaac hovered over the region. Pouring rain was unwelcome to heavily armed riot police, but protesters greeted it with spontaneous dancing. The 99ers who did brave the weather, and authorities, held several workshops, street actions, and even infiltrated indoor events to disrupt keynote speakers with pro-peace and justice outbursts. She, she is, is courageous, unplanned, she is a voice that is so important to America, a voice that has to, we have to make sure returns to be our voice, Let's the United States Jewish Congressman power. Michelle Bachman. State your name and tell me a little bit about why you're out here today. We came from Illinois, South Central Illinois, and it's important to us to speak up. Uh, if we don't speak up, this Tea Party faction that we've got now in Congress is going to take over everything. And they've got radical extremist ideas. The last few days of the RNC saw a rally against voter suppression to call out anti-immigrant and racist GOP rhetoric. They're wrong. They merely showed us that in today's America, democracy will not manifest itself in the ballot, but in the streets, in the picket lines, in solidarity with immigrant rights groups, 
We're group fighting for equality, folks. So we're going to show them what democracy looks like. So show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Now, folks, other central labor councils from the FLCIO, along with mine, endorsed this rally and they were going to come here. And, but the buses, the buses canceled. The buses did not want to come in the, in the hurricane. But the people did not cancel. The people are here in spirit. Did you hear what I said? Hillsborough County, right here where you live, where you work, where you send your children to school, is number one at adjudicating our children uh, as, as, as adults in the juvenile court system, which means that uh, if they get a felony on their record, they won't be able to vote. That's voter suppression. You understand what I'm saying? That, that's voter suppression. And, and that's the kind of situation that we're faced with every day. There was also a fix stuff up action in which 99ers armed themselves with building tools and commitment to make dreams reality, to work on local projects such as house repair and environmental cleanup. A vigil for peace was held to call on leaders to bring troops and contractors home, to speak for those who do not have a voice, and to mourn the innocents who have been killed. Environmental Day highlighted several pressing concerns and included a brief march and shutdown of the Teco Big Bend power plant. Shutdown Bain Capital was a national day of action to showcase the company co-founded by Mitt Romney, which is well known for hostile takeovers leading to worker layoffs and selling companies for spare parts. An interesting sidebar to the RNC was a presentation of a propaganda film produced by the right-wing group Citizens United about Occupy Wall Street. Andrew understood what they represented, and he understood them better than anyone. And so when I decided to make a film on the Occupy movement, I called Andrew and I said, Andrew, we need to make this film. And he was so excited. He was so engaged that uh, he wanted to make this film so badly to tell the American people the story. Embraced. He decided to be fearless in everything that he did in his life. You'll see that in this film today. It is fearless in unmasking Occupy and talk about what the intents are. It is difficult to see why, if the movement is so inconsequential, the ruling elite spends so much time, effort, and money to discredit and defame. Brings to mind the old saying, where there's smoke, there's fire. Hmm. As the RNC wound up, protesters geared up for March on the Democrats, saying both parties pander to corporate interests instead of the people. So the caravan headed to Charlotte, North Carolina and the Democratic National Convention, where the street festival atmosphere was a carefully crafted contrast to Tampa, and the appearance was given of welcoming the public with open arms. Them up from the dead, you can have eternal life. Jesus Christ is the answer, folks. God gave his only begotten son that you could have a relationship with God. It isn't religion. Fight back! Fight back! Fight back! Fight back! Disappear! We're here! We are unstoppable! Another one!
And Kennedy Boulevard, uh, just down the street from the National Convention Center, and here out for a, a, a poor people's uh, poverty march, unpermitted march. Currently, there's more state troopers in riot gear and carrying canisters of mace than there um, potentially are protesters. We stand here together today because we are united under the Tampa Bay principles. We are united in our fight for justice. We are united in our fight against racism and poverty and sexism and discrimination and the destroying of the earth and everything else that capitalism has brought to our country. The opening salvo of demonstrators went something like this. In September of 2012, the social justice movements of the United States have an opportunity and obligation to use the spectacle of the Democratic National Convention as a platform to raise people's demands for justice on the world stage. The Coalition to March on Wall Street South opposes the policies of the Democratic Party and their banking cronies. Charlotte is the Wall Street of the South. With the world headquarters of Bank of America and the East Coast headquarters of Wells Fargo, it is the second largest concentration of finance capital in the U.S. after New York City. The coalition pointed out that Americans need a people's movement for justice for the 99 percent, that economic crises at home and abroad intensify while jobs and vital services have been cut at municipal, state, and federal levels that Democrats and Republicans are pushing austerity programs while simultaneously brokering deals that bail out and benefit banks and large corporations. So on Sunday, 99ers gathered to march together to the big banks, passing the sites where the Democratic National Convention will meet during the week. Their message? Yes, to jobs, housing, health care, education, the environment, workers' rights, and justice. No to wars, cutbacks, racism and bigotry, and deportations. I'll just start talking. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, my name is Richard Houghton. I'm a bank employee. I work for Burlington's Coal Factory in Houston, Texas. So I was wondering, could you tell me a little bit about what's going on today, why you're here, what the purpose is, and what's going on? Uh, right now we're rallying against Bane for them to waste the minimum wage because we are underpaid and and underappreciated workers. Yeah. And we want them to hear our voice and we want to get our opinion across that we will not give up until we raise the minimum wage and that and that we get our demands heard. So what exactly are your demands? Do you have any specific demands? That they raise the minimum wage, that they give us full-time benefits for part-time employees. I mean, I'm a, myself personally, I'm a part-time employee, but I work full-time hours and I don't get as many benefits. The main targets of the march included Bank of America's World Headquarters, Wells Fargo's Eastern Headquarters, the Time Warner Cable Arena, and the Bank of America Stadium. There were stops along the route for a People's Tribunal to speak out against these banks and corporations. Bank of America rang with voices of people who have been directly impacted by home foreclosures, student debt, and the bank's funding of the private prison system, war, and environmental destruction. Folks impacted by Duke Energy's funding of Dirty Energy spoke out about the company's support of the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC, deemed a right-wing bill mill by protesters. Thank <laughs> you.
The Democratic National Convention runs from September 4th through September 6th. Protesters will be there to tell the stories mainstream media should be covering and to call the supposed party of the good guys out on stark realities. Public workers in North Carolina and Virginia are denied their right to collectively bargain, and workers elsewhere across the country are seeing this right under attack. Under the Democratic Party, the reach of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, expanded and deportations skyrocketed. U.S. wars abroad have extended, and the U.S. continues to spend billions in Afghanistan and Iraq. U.S. war drones fly over the Middle East and Africa. Anti-war and international solidarity activists are targeted in FBI raids and grand jury witch hunts while we continue to fight for freedom for long incarcerated U.S. political prisoners. What's your name, sir? Wade Former. Why are you out here uh, protesting against Condoleezza Rice? What is she here to do? She was a part of the Bush administration that started the lies about the wars in Iraq and in Afghanistan. We're in our 11th year of Afghanistan now. We still have troops in Iraq. We have troops coming home who are suffering both from traumatic brain injury, PTSD, we have sovereign people's families being killed and destructed in Iraq and Afghanistan still. We need to arrest the war criminals, we need to make an example out of them. That includes Donald Rumsfeld, Condi Rice, George Bush, all of them in that administration who supported the war rather than diplomacy and continued to kill people in sovereign nations and our own. The 99% have seen a rise in bigotry and political targeting of Muslim and Arab people. They want to see justice and equality for black, native, Latino peoples, for women, and for LGBTQ. And in the last couple of years, we've seen vigilantes allowed to kill young, brown, and black women and men across this country. We have seen undocumented folks be deported who have come here at a young age. We have seen the destruction of our democracy in this country. And it is not one party but two that have helped in this destruction. They call for a moratorium on foreclosures and evictions. They oppose the attack on our planet by big corporations, and they continue the fight for environmental justice, demanding healthy air, land, and water. Occupy and his allies say now, more than ever, there is need for a powerful mass movement that can challenge the pro-war, pro-Wall Street agendas of the two corporate parties. The seeds of such a movement have been planted, now for the growing and the uprising. My name is Michael Marceau. I'm with uh, Veterans for Peace, the D.C. chapter. I'm a uh, disabled Vietnam veteran. And, and I think that um, one of the missions of the Veterans for Peace is to let the civilian world know the true cost of war. And I think uh, Bradley Manning, being the whistleblower, is trying to tell the true cost of war. And that includes the lies that the military and the politicians tell the American people to get their support, uh, have their continuing support and, uh, and money. And I think that the one of the true costs of war is also the current economic situation. When we spend more than 50% of our discretionary spending on defense-related uh, items and programs and military programs, um, that eliminates a lot of the stuff. That's why we are laying off first responders and librarians and teachers, and we have no money for health care or green jobs. It's just that I think it's time we need to reprioritize our country away from the military and focus on civilian stuff. Why, Why do you support Bradley Manning? Because I think it's important for people to know what's going on in the government because in a democracy, we can't really have a democracy where people, we can't have a democracy if people can't make informed decisions and people need to know what's going on to make informed decisions. Meanwhile, a few hundred miles north, Private Bradley Manning's trial continued. Part and parcel of the Democratic administration's persecution of whistleblowers, his ordeal plods on. Like big truck horns. Why do you support Bradley Manning? Because if he did what they say he did, I appreciate his providing information to the public. We need it. We have the right to it. And 
whether or not he did anything, he's been so abused now that they need to just say, and Obama and a lot of others already saying he's guilty without even affording him the right to a trial. They need to just let him go. So either way, I support him. Supporters showed up at Fort Meade, Maryland to let the young man know he has not been forgotten and to represent the people of the planet who appreciate the truths he is accused of exposing. Why, why do you support Bradley Manning? Because Bradley Manning is a whistleblower. He told the reason they hate him because he told the truth. He released the collateral murder video. It showed uh, U.S. Army Apache helicopters massacring a civilian population. That's the truth. In Washington, D.C., occupiers and labor allies turned out as part of a national day of action to reject Mitt Romney's economic plan as the Republican candidate for president. Protesters marched from Malcolm X Park to 14th and U Street stating what voters want, loud and clear. Increase the federal minimum wage, end tax breaks for the rich and corporations, stop corporate personhood, renew focus on good paying jobs, and last but not least, Congress needs to represent the people, not just the rich. What a concept, eh?